welcome all to Red Sony with Steve, and I think we're up to episode 8, and this episode we're going to be going over something that is quite popular and famous, uh, yet many, many people it, it kind of don't understand it really. They know what it does, but don't really understand it, and that is the bud switch, and we're going to jump straight into it right now. So I'm sure a lot of you out there could tell me that a bud switch is a block update detector switch. And that pretty much all of you could tell me that it activates whenever a block next to it is updated. Such as a grass block growing or decaying or a furnace turning on or off or pretty much anything that changes the block itself is a block update. So for instance like uh, even placing a block, removing a block is... Um, an entity walking like a player on a block is not a block update because it doesn't actually change the block. Uh, though redstone blocks are obviously uh, excluded from that because they actually change when you walk on them. Um, so stuff like that. Uh, glowstone lamp turning on or off. It's another example. Um, so we're going to go through a fair few different types of bud switches in this episode. And I'm going to explain to you how each one works. Although, it is pretty much the same concept all the time, except from different angles and different ways they work. So, heard you guys like generic bud switches? This is the most basic form of a bud switch. Uh, we have a lever here. It's off. This isn't going to do anything. We turn it on. Now, technically, this piston thinks it's powered. However, it won't extend until we update a block. And now it's powered by this block. However, when we turn this off, no longer being powered, but we need a block update here to make it retract. To make it... It, it, it kind of... I, I like to think of it as it's powered and the block, it kind of reminds it that it's powered. Um, so, basically, how pistons work normally is that you can power them normally from here, but because when you flick this lever, this block actually updates, it receives redstone power. Um, it updates the piston. So that's why they all retract like that. Um, but in this, because the block next to it isn't being updated from any of the six sides, um, you can't... You, you, it doesn't actually power until you put the block down and update it. So that's how it's kind of working. Um, one thing to note is that it works both ways. You can make it turn on or off. It works as a block, as a bud switch, both ways. Just something to keep in mind if you want to kind of use it for anything else. One more thing to know about this bud switch is that it can be powered from any of these blocks. So if we do this, it can be done doing that. And also this way as well, like such. Um, but if we were to raise this, it does not work if you power it from diagonal below. Won't work. So it has to be above. Now we have a setup here. Um, so we have our diamond block here. And we don't want anyone touching that. We don't want anyone breaking that block. So we're going to do this. We're going to set up our bud switch as such. And what we're going to do, we're actually going to use this bud switch. The best the best way and easiest way is just to do this. As such. Um, in fact, we're going to power it from the other side because I just realized that that'll cause a block update. Um, we're going to do that. And as such, and I don't know, what, what are we going to do? And we'll just put an output line here. I don't really... I'm not going to hook it up to anything, but usually you could have uh, a floor open up, drop down into lava, or maybe even TNT. But probably lava is the best option because you don't want to blow up your block. Um, we have this as such, and we have this on. So we're going to turn it on, and nothing seems to happen. But remember, when we did this before, when we updated this block, it extended because then it realized it's powered. So if anyone's going to break this diamond block, it's going to update, and this line is going to go on, which is going to 
make sure you can uh, catch the person that's trying to touch your diamond block. So the next type of bud switch we're going to look at is uh, it's 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 a bit more complicated and we have the bud component here. You can see that this piston isn't being powered in any way. Uh, the only ones it could be powered from is maybe here, but uh, putting it into an extended sticky pistons block will not power the piston. I'll tell you that now. Um, basically what this does, we're going to watch the light. We're going to update it. And you can see the light blinked. And you see it blinked again. You can see every time we update this piston, we're going to get a signal. And basically what's happening is we're updating this piston. It's retracting. The torch under here turns this off, which will turn these redstone torches on. So both of these are going to turn on. This is going to go all the way around, and this repeater is going to power this block for about one torch. Give or take. I think it's one torch it powers it for. Um, and this other one beforehand is going to go around here and it's going to extend this piston. Now what this does, this piston extending actually update re-updates the piston. So this is going to go on power this block and if we remember from the simple bud switch the diagonal block will power will turn on a bud switch. So this piston is going to retract, this block's going to turn on, but will not but this piston won't extend because it hasn't been updated. So this piston is here to f update it, which will extend this and then reset the bud switch. As you can see, happens every time. And you can see that this turns on and then this piston goes and as soon as it touches this, this extends. And you can see exactly it's exactly what it does. So this is a great way if you want to get a signal every time you sort of update a block. Now we can see this circuit will activate every single time we update this block. But sometimes we don't really want that because Say we want to only activate it when we place a block. It's not going to happen because every time we break the block it's going to activate as well. So how we solve this is we just remove this piston. We only take this component. So you can see we have this inverted signal up to here. And you can see that when we update this, because this block is powered, it's going to update. And now you can see that this isn't actually powered. So when we update it again, it's going to turn off, which is going to turn back on this repeater, which will allow us to continually update it. And if we extend a line out, and I'll do the same as the other one. Unlike this one, whenever we placed or broke a block, it will give us a signal. This one will toggle every time we update a block. If we do it quick enough, we can uh, toggle it with one block. So this is what is called a T-Bud, which is basically a T-flip-flop with a bud switch. So that's pretty much all there is to this one. It's actually very, very simple to make and can be used in a fair few, fair few designs, one of which I'm going to go over right now. So what I have here is the classic use of a T-Bud. And you may notice this grass block here. <laughs> Of course it rains straight after I start recording. But we have the grass block here and we're going to put the water on top of it. And basically what happens, and I will record this, um, we have this water block over it with a light level of 15, which is daytime. Um, this grass block will stay alive because the water block will reduce it by 2, light level 2. And so we have light level 13 down that grass block, which is plenty for it to stay alive. However, at night, uh, the light level, I believe, is oh, something like 4 or something. Reduced by 2 is 2, and that's not enough for this grass block to stay alive. So at night, this grass block will die, which will switch the state of this T-Bud. As you can see, it's the same design over here. I've just lowered it a block. And what will happen is this will switch. And then when the grass grows again, during the daytime, and I am missing a grass block next to it, but that's alright. Um, when the grass block grows again during the daytime, the T-Bud will switch back, and our light will turn back on. So that's, how, that's a basic day-night sensor, basically. 
Um, uh, to make an array of these, it is a little more complicated, and I'm not going to go over that today, but I just wanted to show you sort of how this sort of more advanced version of a bud switch can be used. Ah, oh, there we go guys, alright. I was just checking the this grass there. Um, and you can see, if we move that, the, it is dirt now, the grass died, and our T-Bud switched. I'm not going to wait for day for the grass to grow back, because uh, I need to replace this with glass and stuff like that. Uh, but just wanted to kind of show you what went on. Uh, well, I'll check how much time we have left, and if we have a bit of time, I'll go over one last type of bud switch. So we're a little over time, but lucky for you, I don't really mind. Um, I'm just going to quickly show you here the most annoying bud switch in the entire game, in my opinion, and probably the most annoying piston bug in the entire game, because it ruins so many, many things, including piston doors. I had trouble with this during piston doors and stuff. Alright, we have a piston here, an air block, and then a block, if I can fly, we're going to power. Alright, surely you'd think that this wouldn't be any type of bud switch. Yeah, it is. Um, it's called the uh, quasi-connectivity piston bug, um, where a piston can be powered from block a block two blocks above it. And, however, if you want to hide a bud switch in the roof, in a too high roof, if you turn this on, and you have a piston here, it's very easy to hide, and no one even would know it was a bud switch. So, it does have its uses, but in my honest opinion, it's just an annoying bug that I want to see removed from the game because it annoys me. <laughs> but, again, personal opinion. Don't have a go off here about it. But, uh, yeah, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I know a lot of you guys last episode wanted me to go over this, so I listened to you guys. I went over them. So uh, make sure you keep those requests coming. I really need some more requests. I always need more requests. I, I, I love hearing you, you guys comment. Um, I will put up a much better world download this time. I Every time I finish recording, I get lag. Um, I forgot to put the Gloucester rings and signs um, on the last episode. I apologize for that. Uh, but as usual, world download in that description. First line. Go check them out. You can use these bud switches for yourself. Figure out how they work. And stuff like that. So... Yeah, hope you enjoyed this, and I'll catch you next time, guys.